do you need an alternative to your current database stack? Or do you need to handle and store complex data with high level of throughput? Or are you just a fan of NoSQL databases? You answered yes to any of these questions? Join me in the next episode of Decoded Quick Kits, where I guide you through how to use DynamoDB without systems. In a previous decoded video, I talked about a few AWS components that you can find on Forge and use them in your out systems applications. I've talked about um, DynamoDB in that video, but just to recap, DynamoDB can be a good alternative for your out systems application database if you want to store high amounts of data, aggregated data, and if that data is complementary to the core functionalities of your application. A good example of this is user analytics or ap applicational logs. So that's one of the use cases that we're going to choose for this video. But before we get our hands dirty, a couple of notes that I want to share with you. So there are a lot of more use cases that you could use DynamoDB with. I'm choosing this one because it seems the simple one to show you in a quick video. And I will be taking some shortcuts uh, through the process of implementation of this use case to make it simpler for you because the goal here is to show you how to integrate with DynamoDB and not to show you how the whole development process of an application, right? So let's do this. Okay, so the plan here is this. We are using an application that is already in production and has a lot of users and we want to check how our users are navigating the application so we know where we can improve further in the development cycle, okay? And this is the application where I will be working and we will need to install the DynamoDB component. We will need to create our AWS account and generate some access credentials. Then we will need to get our head around how we are going to write the, the data of our user's navigation and later use it in our application and see the results. Okay, so first let's take a look at the application that we are going to use. And it's here, the product catalog application. And you can install this application because it's one of those sample apps that you can install through the new application pop-up. And let's open it in the browser so we can see where we want to analyze our user navigation. So as you can see, it's a very simple one. You can scroll down and see different categories of products. And if we click view products, that are just arrived, you have the products that have just arrived. So I do think that it's a good way to use DynamoDB to check how many people click this button so that we know how engaged our end user are with the just arrived, with the, with the novelty of our products. So that's how we are going to start. And now we need to install the DynamoDB component. And to do that, we need go to the Out Systems Forge, search for DynamoDB. We have one component that offers this service to Out Systems applications. And as you can see, there was some updates by someone and we want to install it in our environment. We have everything checked so it's safe to install and let's install it in our environment. and it installed. So now we will need to create an AWS account and credentials so we can use this. Um, let's do that. And to create an AWS account, you need to go to aws.amazon.com. Um, you have the get started for free and then you'll have a form with a few steps that you need to fill in to create your account. And that should be it. Once you have your account created and verified, um, you'll be redirected to the AWS Management Console, and this is where you, we will create our users and generate the access credentials. So in order to do that, I can go here to the search, search for INM, and go to the Users feature. As you can see, I already have the right logs user. Um, so you'll need to create a user. And once you do that, you have the security credentials um, tab where you will create, as you can see here, you create the access key and the secret access key, and the, you'll be able to download it as a CSV, a CSV file. Going just back a little bit, 
you can see here that I've given full access to this user, which is not the proper way of doing this. But once again, I'm simplifying things to make sure that we do this the most simple way and you know how to integrate with DynamoDB. One last step before we go into code is to uh, give the access credentials to the connector. So in order to do that, we go to Service Center in our development environment and we'll set these credentials as um, site properties in the Amazon DynamoDB module. In order to do this, I have already in hand here site properties. And as you can see, you have the access key ID where you will um, assign as an effective value the access key that you gave, that Amazon gave you, and secret access key, the same. Effective value, the one that you downloaded in the CSV. Once you save those um, credentials, you are ready to test and build some code. And we are ready to build some code. So let's start with the product catalog. And what we will want to do is to create a module that will be my kind of library for logs in the product catalog application. So let's create this module. And two things that we need to do here. One is um, our DynamoDB tables uh, mapped to OutSystem structures. And let's take a look at the actual DynamoDB table. So I've already created it. It's easy to do. You go to the DynamoDB console, create a table, and it will ask you for um, a primary key. And what I decided that this primary key would be for the navigation of the user was a request key. Then, given that this is a schemeless um, database, we are the ones that decide what we want to do with the items that we are going to write in this table. So first thing, let's create a structure, call it log, the same name as the DynamoDB table, and we will need always to have the request key in the request. One thing that we will need is a bit of help with converting data types in our systems to the data, data types that DynamoDB is accepting. So in order to do that, let me get the references that I will be needing in, in this application. And I know that I want to write an item and I'll need the data type helpers. So click apply and I'll have the data type helpers available here. So we know that this will be a string and in order to do that, we will need to change from text to string to a DynamoDB string. And very quickly, what this means when we serialize it to JSON is that the request key attribute will be a string and the value will be assigned in this structure attribute, okay? So we have this and now we need a little bit more information. And I'm guessing that we will need like the element that was clicked, the action that was performed, and when. It's always important to know when these things happen. And once again, I'll change the, the attributes to DynamoDB strings. All of those will be interpreted as strings. Now that we have our table mapped, let's create a public action, a server one, that will need input parameters like the element that is clicked and, and the action, because it could be a click button or a view page or another type of action that we want to um, Log. And this is the context that we'll need from the application that we'll be using this section. Let's make it public, give it a description. And here we want to serialize the information. So let me call it log and it will automatically assign to our structure. Here we will say that this will be a request function from the platform, the element will be input, the action, and the timestamp will be the current time. So this is the information to the log variable, and we will need to serialize it in order to use it with DynamoDB. Here, and we want to serialize in, in case something is um, null, we want to nonetheless say to DynamoDB that that value is no end. It's time we call our DynamoDB item put. And what we'll need here is the AWS credentials, which we won't need in this particular use case because we, are, we already assigned the access key and the secret access key to the site properties. But if we want to have a particular set of access credentials for each application or 
use case, we, we, we might want to use this input. This won't be necessary in this case. The table name will be log and the item will be this one. So I think we have everything ready to log the user action and I think we can use it in our production application. So let's publish it. So it's published. Let's try to use it in our application. Okay, uh, here we have the product catalog. Let's open the end user module, the home page. And this is um, the button that we want to check if people are clicking because they want to know um, what new products are um, in our store. So to do this, uh, we'll need to create um, a new client action. I uh, will need to reference the Amazon DynoDB action that we, that we just created one log user activity and what will happen is whenever someone clicks a button we will lock that click and this is the view more button and the action is click of course one of the things that we want to do is to redirect to the phone page and let's publish it and see if this is working Okay, let's open it in the browser. And once again, this should be very transparent to the user, right? So if I click here, what the user will see is the redirect to the page and nothing else. But if I go to the DynamoDB and refresh it, we have some action happening. So yeah, we log the click of a button in this request um, within this timestamp. So that's done. And now that we know how to create an item in our DynamoDB table, we will need to create um, some way of reading that data instead of just going every time to the AWS console. And in order to do that, I'm going to create um, a new application from scratch so I can have a separate UI um, from the main application. And I'm going to call it Product Catalog Analytics. Why not? Load a create icon. And oh. Create an app and create this module. I'm going to create a new screen, call it dashboard and and have a pretty name for screen. I'm going to publish and this is just groundwork. So what I will need to do is to go back to our product catalog and I'll move this module to the analytics part. It seems to be more appropriate to be there. In a more complex use case, this could be a different core application uh, by all its means. Let's create an action that will um, allow us to get all the logs from uh, the DynamoDB table. And once again, new public action, log list is public. We want to retrieve a list of logs. Once again, I'll need to manage my dependencies and uh, we will use the scan operation since it's the simple one to show you in a quick fashion. We, we also have other two ways of getting items from DynamoDB, uh, to query a table or to get a specific item by its um, partition key. So the query method has a lot of options that you can use. And one of the main things that you need to have in mind is when you are building the DynamoDB table, the most important thing is to understand how you are going to fetch data because you will always need the partition key to get data from the DynamoDB. So in this example, and let me show you, probably it's easier. In this example, what I said that is the partition key is the request um, key attribute. What, what this means is that I will always need to know the request key that, I'm, that I want to fetch in order to query or get an item. So let's say that um, the business rule here is that I want to know how many people clicked action click the element view more button in order to do this i would i would need to create the table as um, the element as the partition key and action as the sort key for example and then when i use the query method and let's go back here when i use the query method method the key condition expression would be um, the partition and the sort key um, 
So yeah, please bear in mind that it's a different way of working with data than a relational model that we are more uh, exposed to, I would assume. So let's uh, bring, once again, going back, let's bring the scan item, the scan method to our library, use it in our public action. Once again, it's the log table and the credentials are already assigned in the site properties of the connector. And I want, oh, yes, I'm forgetting one thing that is, this will be a JSON. Um, text so what i will need to do is to deserialize this meaning that the data type will be a log list that i want to deserialize and in this way there it is i'm uh, retrieving all the items in the log table so this is giving me an error because the log structure is not public now it is and i can publish it while i'm doing this i can just reference by drag and dropping to server actions and here it is it will be available once the other module publishes and i will want to fetch data from other sources but once again this is a log list logs and let me fetch that Oops, let me fetch that data. Assign it to the proper structure. Here it is. And let's create a table with that. So given the specific structure that we've created in order to work with DynamoDB, we have some extra work here, but that could be easier to do. So if I see this other cell is from a request key. So what I want here to appear is the request key and the same for the other uh, headers so i think that's it and let's publish this um, dashboard open it in the browser and here we have the same data that we have in our table it's the same data that we have here and we are done. So in a few minutes, we were able to include DynamoDB in our environment, set it up, build the logic that we knew was important to create and read data, uh, use it in our applications, and even build a quick back office so we could see the data in another place than the AWS console. That's it. Uh, a quick example of how you can use DynamoDB in your applications and therefore take advantage of two powerhouses in development, our systems and AWS. Stay tuned for more episodes where we go through all the things that you can do with our systems and see you in the next one.